ISS Part 2. Cleaning up our data on real-time streaming. Visualizing on Power BI. And then we have a question from you, the Tales from the Field audience, and we are going to answer it on this video next on Tales from the Field. Good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. This is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. And on Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the creators in the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have our MS Tech Bits, where we share some information that we've learned in working with product groups and working with customers or learning on our own, inspired by great content from the community. This is one of those videos right now. Let's get over that great content. Okay, so remember where we were last time. We created our KQL database with two tables, IIS Loc and Astronauts. We also created two logic apps, one to import our geolocation data, another to import our astronauts, and then two Microsoft Fabric event streams that are consuming that data because the logic apps are running every five seconds. That means every five seconds, we're loading data from our event stream into our IIS Loc and our astronauts table. Now, if we look at that format really closely in the last video, we're not quite yet where we can consume that in Power BI. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to get this data. We're going to retune the data from the event stream into the tables, and then we're going to take our Power BI and we're going to visualize the IIS space station so we can get some real time information and location data. You know how we like to do this, right? Let's not talk about it. Let's head over to the demos. All right, so we're in my Fabric workspace, and there's these three objects specifically we're going to be working with, our KQL database, our event streams, and we're going to start out with our IS Geoloc event stream. We're going to add a new destination for the KQL database. Uh, this is the information you already know. We can name this whatever we want. We use our workspace. We use ISDB because I misnamed it. And then we're going to enter our table, IIS Loc. Next, we're going to go to our source, uh, no changes there, schema. Now we're going to go for JSON, and when we select it, we see it begin to separate. Now there's a couple things we need to do. We need to make two levels deep magic, right? Look, now we get the longitude and latitude separated out, and this is really, really key. We need this information, but we're not done. We need to make sure that we change the data type, and we set these to real value data types. Longitude and latitude, we need to do the same thing, real data types. The next up, we need to affect the timestamp because you see this is a Unix timestamp in seconds. We're going to change the data type first to a string because we need it to be a string for us to be able to do our next part, which is set a mapping transformation. We're going to set the mapping transformation. We're going to select this. We're going to say date time from Unix seconds. We click update, more magic. I can now see that this is a timestamp and this is what we need. We click next to go to summary. We load our table, we begin our sync. We look at our data preview and when we refresh after we wait a little while, we can see that data is coming in exactly how we need it to be. Now let's head over to astronauts because we need to make sure we format this data correctly. So we're going to go to new destination, same as before, KQL database, ISDB, our workspace, uh, select the database from our workspace, click, click configure. We're going to type in the table name, astronauts. Now I'm doing a new table you could append to, but this is important. Here on the source, we're going to more parameters because we specifically need the X opted and Q time. This is a service broker event that brings in the time that we are ingesting the event to be able to match up the data the same way that we have in the demo. We need that. So we're going to change this to JSON. More magic. We can see that we've got our exact opt-in and Q. I'm just going to validate that this is a date time because I couldn't really see it. I'm going to click next because we need this data to be where it is. Okay. Now, once we've got this in place, there's a couple KQL queries that we're going to need to use specifically with our Power BI report. Let's head over and look at those. All right, so 
I'm in a KQL query and I've got my first one, which we're using ISS location to be able to render the latitude and longitude and a timestamp across the map. And this is just a pure KQL query. Really cool. Next up, astronauts. We've got our astronaut data because we want to understand who are the astronauts on the ISS. And then we have our location data. Now we head over to GitHub and we're going to click on the Power BI report. We want to get the report and we're going to download it. Now keep in mind, when we download it, everything's going to be broken. And that's okay, because now we're going to walk through how we fix it. When you get prompted, upgrade your maps. Now, no matter what happens, this isn't going to load, right? It's, it's broken. So we got to go to Transform Data, select Transform Data, and load the transformation. Access to resources forbidden, that's not good. But what we need to do is, of course, we can't access this. It's not our cluster. How do we find our KQL cluster? Well, let's head over to Fabric. Over in Fabric in our KQL database, we click on our query URI. We're going to copy this to everybody's favorite tool, Notepad, and we're going to use this over and over again. So you want to make sure and save this. But this is how we're going to be able to query our Kusto cluster and get this data. We're going to go back into Data Explorer. We're going to change this source. This is where we add it. We're going to add our cluster and then our database, IISDB. Remember, I did it wrong. And then we change the query to our first query where we're using position and latitude. Boom! We have data. Fantastic. Now you're going to want to change these two column headers. I could have done this in the ingestion, but I made a mistake here, but I wanted to show we can still use Power Query to be able to fix this because we need these columns to be named longitude and latitude. Otherwise, you're just going to have to make the visualization from scratch, and I'd, I'd rather just make it work for you, but it's still possible. We go into astronauts, same thing. We add our cluster. We add our database. This query didn't really change, um, but if you want to, it's query number two on the list that we're using. We see our data. It came in just fine. We're going to change this parameter value to be our cluster. Uh, the next parameter, International Space Station, I'm fine with that. But then we get to IIS Orbit. We add our cluster. We add our database. And this is our third query that we add. We click OK. The data is great, but two things we got to do. We got to change those headers. We want longitude and we want latitude, and then we're going to be able to close and apply, and we're going to be able to ingest this data to where we can uh, actually have our report visualized. So here we go. Change to latitude, close and apply because everything else is good. We're good to go. Now let's go take a look at our International Space Station and our data. Everything is loading. Cool thing, this is using direct query. So this is a direct query source, and I've got my report set to update every five seconds because that's how it came downloaded. And when our data begins to visualize, what do we see? Well, we can see that the International Space Station is just off of New Zealand. As a matter of fact, because it's uploading every five seconds, you can see it begin to increment. We can check out the latest orbitable path, and we can see where it went. We can come back over to the IIS tab if we want, and we can see this continue to be able to increment. Not going to lie. I know it's a cool tech thing when my kids think it's awesome, and my kids thought this was pretty cool. This was a really fun way to show how we can do real-time ingestion. But wait, we aren't done just yet. You know how we're always saying, keep the conversation going in the comment below? Well, you did this time. So Fanny 4952 writes in, thanks for sharing. This is helpful, but is I wonder, is it possible to do real-time data ingestion into Data Lakehouse in Fabric? Oh, so Fanny, it is. It is possible. So back over in Fabric, if I go and I click on Geolog, now we could start an event stream going just to a lake house. I can see I've got an option for a lake house. Interesting thing, I can actually stream to two sources at once. So what are we going to do? We're going to come in here. We're going to add a destination name. This can be anything we want. Uh, we're going to select our workspace. And then from there, we're going to populate a lake house that we already have created. Um, I'm going to create a new Delta table in this case to be able to put this data going to it. Um, IIS geoloc or under IIS underscore loc. Um, again, name it at anything we want. We have multiple formats we can do. But I saw this open event processor and I found 
oh, we've probably got some more interesting things we can do with it. I could click on and get a statistics preview to see some of the data coming in. And I realize there's a lot of options. We're going to have to play around with this a little bit more. But one of the cool things about the event stream was I could simultaneously put this live data in two different places. As you can see, we get a data preview. We can look at the data insights. Then I can hover over to my lake house and I can see that I've got my data sitting in the lake house. So yes, yes, we can use a lake house for real time streaming analytics. So what did we cover? We covered a lot today, right? We covered how we could actually edit the data that we're streaming in live from an event hub and how we could change the format. We covered how to visualize that, how to get second by second updates of the International Space Station. Very, very cool stuff. And then on top of it, we showed that we could use Lake House as a source repository for our streaming data to be able to reside in as well. It also a bonus, we showed that we could stream to two physical locations at the same time, our KQL database and our lake house. So, you know, what we want to do, we want to keep this conversation going. Do you have any questions? Anything we haven't covered? Anything you'd like to see? Thank you so much again for the comments and the inspirations to be able to make the video. Be good to one another out there and have a great week. Thank you so much for joining us at Tales from the Field. Bye-bye. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replica.